blessing. All we're doing, so all they seeing is human beings killing other human beings. Where they're going and what they'll be then. The children only gonna go where we lead them. Cry for the children. Cry for the children. Cry for the children. Cry for the children. I understand. Little rich girl, she ten hooked on Vicodin. Little poor girl, she ate and she hardly ate. So a little stomach growling, keep her up all late. Little boy 13, gotta hustle the fiends. So a little boy nine, about to lose his mind. He was kidnapped and forced to fight in the army with a bunch of other little soldiers crying for mommy. The children are the future, we say. So tell me why we desecrate the children this way. It's an amber alert, a child's getting hurt. Nobody cares, we put our heads in the dirt. Yo, to me that's crazy, cause the children come first. Make them feel protected, give the children comfort All we doing, so all they seeing is human beings killing other human beings The children are lost with no one to lead them So I cry for the children, cry for the children I cry for the children, I cry for the children Cry for the children, and so I cry for the children I cry for the children, no I cry for the children, I cry for the children I cry for the children I cry for the children, they lost with no one to lead them I cry for the children down on Edmund's son Cause for the sickness that we gave them, there's no medicine Cry, South America and Africa Israel and Palestine, yo, I'm there with you You see, each and every child on this earth is born naked And then we take them and we clothe them with hatred We have a vow to protect and yo, we break it I see them crying and I just can't take it So I cry for them, sigh for them Somebody gotta ask why for them Mommy and daddy, why you lie? to them, put my life on the line, yo, I died for them, I mean, we could give them peace for sure, instead we choose to send our children to war, tell them life and love and all that special, you still fighting over land, when the land will outlast you, so I cry for the children, no, I cry for the children, no, I cry for the children, I cry for the children, no, I cry for the children, no, I cry for the children, 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 no. I cried for the children, they lost with no one to leave them. The children gonna learn the truth someday. The summer only holy on a Sunday. Only a few will try to build with you. The rest, all they wanna do is steal from you. Children take that burden, yet they take it gladly. Tell them live righteous and tell them be happy. Tell them that you love them and we need them badly. Teach them culture and I teach them family. Please, don't make the children be another victim. Give them the knowledge and let life give I'm Michelle Odom, one of the co-hosts uh, of the book group, and and I'm in New York. Welcome, Georgette. Um, I'm Georgette Moses, and I'm uh, participating from Columbia, South Carolina, and I'm happy to be among my book group friends <laughs> here tonight. Welcome. Joel? Uh, Joel from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Just glad to be here. Labib? All right, Labib Hamid, uh, uh, coming to you live from uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to see everybody that uh, is here today. And you're moderating today. Uh, yes, I'm moderating today. Forgive me. And Randy? Hi, my name is Randy. I am watching from Atlanta. And I'm excited that Labib is moderating because I don't think I've ever been in a meeting where he was. I don't know if he has yet. So this is new. Yeah, it is new. <laughs> <laughs> and Vanita? Hi, my name is Vanita Walker. I'm uh, joining you all from Connecticut. Uh, welcome to the National Black Feminist Book Group. Enjoy the evening. Very good. Uh, this is from Alice Walker's book, We Are the Ones We Have Been Waiting For. Inner light and at, in a time of darkness. And this is from chapter uh, seven.
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you said that because that that's what I wanted to mention before was this this thing with the Ebola, for example. Um, you know, all of this divide and conquer um, stops us from seeing our connections to each other mm -hmm. as human beings, as as whatever. And so, take this Ebola thing for example. Um, you know, this week we heard that Cuba is um, uh, sending a bunch of uh, uh, doctors and resources over there to go and do what the United Nations <laughs> World Health Organization <laughs> refused to do. Um, but I was reading this other article where where the public health official was trying to explain to human beings that you know it. it all right, I'm going to say it my way, not his way. And he was just saying, "Stop being stupid." You know, this is a world public health issue. Everybody yeah. needs to be on board dealing yeah. with this. This is not about an African problem. Exactly. What's wrong with you people? So yeah. you know, it, it just it just it boggles the mind. It really it really. It's, I'm, different. it's not different than when, uh, initially when the AIDS epidemic came yeah. onto the scene. Yeah. You know, yeah. as long as it was Haitian, as long as it was gay, as long as there was anybody but white folks, it was okay. Okay, what they forget is that humans come in contact. We are global. People travel around the continent and around the world every day. Girl, people are crazy as hell. Okay, and that's more important than any war that's going on. <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> as as because you can wipe out a small village of people, a small country, a small town like Cromwell, Connecticut, a snap. So why everybody yes. on the NFL and the NBA and the world over here? Your best to think, hope that this plague doesn't spread throughout the world because you ain't got to worry about the war. You got to worry about the NFL. You got to worry about child abuse. There ain't gonna be nobody. And I, I, I call it like you know. This is why. This is why we are where we at today. The same idiot shit. Keeps us right here. Now I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna be doing any more video editing, Vanita. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I mean, I mean, we can all be flowery and we can be diplomatic, but apparently and obviously, we tried that for a long time, and folks don't get it. You know, I've done the diplomacy thing. Picking and choosing every word. Make sure I'm politically correct. How many ways can you say idiot? You know, I mean, really, and, and and I just don't understand anyone or what anyone is thinking right about now. That's my main concern. What happened to Rice? That situation that happens every day. Okay, I'm not even gonna get on that subject. Okay, because uh, I, I ain't gonna get on that subject. Let's just put it this way: He would have knocked my ass out once, but he would not be on television telling anybody he knocked out Benita. No, I'm, girl, you know, and there's a lot of things this, in also in this chapter that I found very important, and we have not gotten to them. We had not even touched bases on them. Uh, Sarah Bartman was one that I cried last night. I didn't sleep last night. That it disturbed me more than the world economy. This shit's been going on forever. This was so. I, I didn't even sleep last night. I literally could not sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just. Share, I, share it with us, Vanita. Well, Sarah Bartman, back in the 1800s, was, of course, uh, sold to some freak. I think in Britain originally. Then she was sold to a freak in France. And I really can't get into it right now because I, I'll be honest with you, I probably will, will just break out in tears. I really will. I mean, I actually cried. Um, and she was treated worse than an animal. Um, 
I, you know, I really can't talk about it because I'm telling you, I, I'm still trying to get over it. Not because these things are unusual. You know, we're going back to the NFL situation when a grown, a big man, six foot two, has no problem punching a woman in the face, knocking her out, and dragging her out of a, a, a out of a, 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 a elevator. Elevator. Okay. And they're, they're married now. Well, you know, we ain't gonna go in there. I can't even get with that because once again, it couldn't have been me. All right, because we don't do that like that. Uh, but Sarah Bartman was a woman that was that was dehumanized. She she was oh my god treated worse than the animal. Um, and did anyone else read that chapter? Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, there's also a movie. You know, um, I know it's on Netflix, but there's a movie about her life. Yes, um, there is. And, you know, she was taken from her hometown of Cape Town, originally to, to London. And she was a, she was a woman that had a, a very large uh, backside. And in her tribe, ancient tribe, um, women's vaginas were really reverent as they should be, always. But for these Frenchmen and the British, it was like a little freak show. So they literally put her in a circus next to animals and showed off her body. This woman, is, is, you know, she sold, showed off her body, all her private parts, made her do all kinds of things. I mean, you really, I don't want to really get into it because it really is, um, it's beyond dehumanizing. I mean, this goes way, way, freak, freak, way on the other side. That you have to be an actual freak, sick person, even, you know, think of something like that due to a human being. She died very young, uh, approximately the age of 26. But death wasn't good enough for them. They didn't mutilate her body. Cut out her vulva, cut off her lips cut off her arm, did all kinds of crazy things, and displayed them in the museum for 187 years until Nelson Mandela demanded her body be sent back to Cape Town. And that I read right after pretty much a page before reading about Alice Walker's a relationship with her European um, friend and then husband. Um, so, it, you know, it, it, it just kind of rocked my world a little bit. I mean, a lot, actually. I was gonna say um, just a little bit, Benita. I mean a little bit. I mean I, I didn't mean that. Too much of that too. But I, I tried to be to keep myself from crying, you know, because it was that sad. And as I told you, it, 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 when I when I when I that happens to a woman, it's me that's happening to. And I look at the young women today, and how they display their bodies, and how they have body augmentation, and how they get on videos and shake their ass and back it up, bitch, and all this other old nasty crap that goes on. If they knew themselves, if they knew what their ancestors went through, like dear Sarah, against her will, you would never think about doing something like that. And so, so many things made through my mind last night, I literally did not sleep at all. But you know, that's, how, that's how sad it is, and that's how shameful yeah. our society is today, because they don't know who they are. They have no know. idea. Well, neither. You know, you, you're so right. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with, to do with history, if I may. If you if you look, uh, you know, the uh, last few history classes that I had when I was in school, that there there's the, the books are written, and I think Randy can really attest to what I'm saying. If anybody's gone to school here lately, is that the whitewashing of history and the lackluster history that is being told, even when they teach you history, even at the collegiate level, that they don't talk about the slave, tra they don't talk about the slave trade, they talk about the triangle, you know, the triangular trade, you know, they don't even talk about, you know, who was involved in the slave trade, what country Why, was involved. Excuse me, uh, Why, as black people, are we depending on white folks to teach our history anyway? Well, I'm not saying I mean, that, I'm, no, I mean, that. I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the books, I'm talking about the books in itself, they just... They're not, you know, they're not even teaching it anywhere. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just talking about plain and simple. They're whitewashing everything that we get 
in every kind of book. And this is where our elders come in. This is where our elders should come in, where this history should be passed down from generation to generation so we know who we are. And it used to be that way. The, you and know what, Vanita? Um, and, and I think this is what Joel's uh, alluding to. What uh, what we're all alluding to is is that there are so many distractions that disable us or disinterest us from telling the truth, uh, not only about our own history and our own interaction with 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 uh, the European, but just history in general. It's just not, it's not happening. I I have a bookcase full of books on such subjects and not one single one of my children have shown any interest in taking the books off the shelf or even picking my brain having read those books pick my brain and when i've introduced the subject it's a turnoff i'll get their attention for about two minutes that's it and as, and as Joel saying in 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 the schoolhouse, um, you know many of us attend uh, uh, white public schools or, or public schools. Period. And the, the curriculum is set by white folks, not by black folks. Uh, and and there's a, a complete uh, a, a sanitize, sanitation uh, or sanitizing of uh, of the history that that you know the children are getting in school. I can certainly attest to that. What I learned about history, I didn't learn it in the public school. I went to the library. And what little I got from the from the public school instruction, I took that and researched it out further at the library. And so one textbook in the classroom turned into ten other books in the library. That was yeah. me. But that's and that's that why we're gonna we're gonna leave this uh, video record of our collected wisdom here, Labib, and, um, you know, when I, and when our children are out there picking that cotton, <laughs> they'll, they'll be thinking, I sure wish I had read them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we, we laugh about oh, that, man. but that, 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 is a, that is a sad reality. I mean, it, it really, really is, and, and again, not, not to I think you all did an excellent job in, in what you all contributed to this conversation here uh, to, to, to kind of give clarity to my point and Alice Walker's point is that we've got to look at this big, this bigger, this big, this, this big colossal system that is sitting on our back and is, it is, and is grinding us into a caste system where we are at the very bottom of that caste system. Okay, and, and what the heck um, can we begin to do to dismantle it, to dismantle this problem here? You know, we're, we're, we, are, we are fighting uh, uh, an uphill battle where the, where the, the incline of the hill is 90 degrees, straight up. You know, and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's, got, it's oiled, so we're slipping and sliding as we're trying to get up that, get up that, uh, get up that hill, that mountain. You know. Excuse me, yeah, but being, do you believe that until the world starts to respect and honor women, nothing will ever change? You're, you're absolutely until right, Vanita. Until this world starts to respect and honor women, we will not have a world, because you're man. Absolutely whether black, green, orange, or yellow, have managed to tear down every living, dead, almost dead thing there is. So until going back to the child abuse and the woman abuse situation, or family, child, you women and children, until this world starts to respect us, it will always go down in ruins. So no matter what we do, and no matter what other oppressive issues we bring in, until that happens, I just, I, I just, I want to say, Benita, and you know, and I pray that no one is going to misunderstand 
um, or accuse me of blaming the victim because that is not what I want to do. But I think we really have to start looking at it as until the woman starts respecting herself, the world is not going to change. And it, and it goes back to the conversation that you and I, that, that you here on the book group about the twinkle in your eye. I guess, um, I'm to stay away from that, Michelle. I was trying to stay away from that. I don't that, want to and, you know, and, and as you said in that discussion, it's too late to wait for the hand to come down. Right. And so there, there, there literally is a twinkle. Men probably, you know, don't know what we're talking about. But there, oh, literally, there, there <laughs> is a twinkle that a man gets in his eye and yep. it, says, it says to the woman intuitively, I'm yep. about to kick your ass. All right. And we we turn that that message off and we tell ourselves all kinds of things about you know how we're not really seeing or hearing what, what we're seeing and hearing. And so we stay. And we stay long enough to get beat up and we stay long enough to get killed and we stay long enough for all kinds of, of drama, we're going to have to be the ones to say, no, I deserve much more than this. I agree. The, the people that are willing to abuse you. And see, my thing is all abuse is the same. Whether you're talking about a romantic relationship, an employment relationship, all relationships are the same. And the person that, that is in the most powerful position and is abusing you, they're having a good time. They are having a good time. They have no incentive whatsoever to stop the abuse. That's whether we're talking about economic abuse, <laughs> emotional abuse, whatever. No incentive whatsoever. So the same thing with this extreme poverty. Until poor people start to say, "All right, no poor people." The, the, the bus stops here. All this right, this ain't happening anymore. You okay. can't buy me for pennies. All right, until we start to say that. The oppressor, or as Labib would say, the white man, <laughs> has no reason whatsoever to stop. But you know, um, you know, it gets to the it gets to the point too. And you when you're talking about the the condition of the of the African American female, um, when you look at the when you look at women and women issues, you know you're talking about the, the ones that are doctors, the ones that are. I mean, when you talk about the doctors, you're talking about the the nurses. But the greatest part of the caregiving system is the CNAs. But you know, you got a, a system make trillions of dollars, or uh, or you know, restaurants that makes billions of dollars, but yet the workers are making eight nine dollars an hour. And the doctors are making hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then the women that are taking this, the hands on this caring for you is making eight or nine dollars, eight or nine dollars, until you know all women stick together on that, you know, and you know the, the Caucasian, the white women, you know, and say, hey, you know, I'm gonna help all these sisters up. Then the plight of the country is not gonna get better because you have they went and they left a whole segment of the feminist movement behind because they made it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we have to we have to be willing to lose a job and yeah. we have to be able to create a job. Mm -hmm. You know, I posted two two examples today. Um, one is um, this guy who was nominated to head the civil rights unit of the Justice Department. And um, and the Republicans and the Democrats gave him a uh, hell of a time getting through the nomination process because at one point in his life he had been on a team that had um, uh, supported Mumia Abu-Jamal. So, um, so he, he ultimately withdrew his nomination. Now he, he's off to be the partner of a law firm. You know, it, it, it really was not a major financial sacrifice for him. But, but his comment was about 
you know, you, you have to be willing to stand for, you know, or he, I think he said your principles are more important than the office that you hold. You know, we have lost touch. And, I, and I'm not really a, pre, a, 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 a religious person, Labi, but I am a preacher's daughter. And we have lost touch with, with what it means to have integrity, character. Uh, the other example was of a female dentist, a black woman, who uh, the white folks called her in the office and and uh, you know gave her a good talking to. You know, we see you've been on Facebook, you know, supporting black people, talking about that Mike Brown situation. Oh, now, what's going on here? She said, "Excuse me, what's she say, Benita? I've got to get my pocketbook." <laughs> I'm out. Now, <laughs> get, your get your pocketbook and go. It's all about abuse and how much abuse you're willing to tolerate. Yeah. That's right. We take far too much. And you know, and once again, you have to be very careful because you don't want to offend anyone. But I talked to Randy about that twinkle in your eye. Um, also, I say to women that are being abused. And in that case in particular, her stuff is out there for the world to see. So you have every opportunity to leave that fool. Why you're still sitting there, I don't know. She had a little girl. I got a problem with that. Even if you don't love yourself, and apparently you don't. Because every time you let somebody knock you out, you ain't feeling good about yourself. Which means that he has done or hit you before. When the man gets that brazen to knock you out cold, he has beat your behind many times before. So that was a new revelation. Okay, that is the ice on the damn cake. But even if you don't care about yourself, what about your child? I mean, what she has a daughter. When he finished whooping your behind, guess who comes next? Your child. Then I can turn around and kill you, commit felonies, get 20 years, join over the book club. I mean, why go through all that? I mean, each like I said, with these women, you know, you gotta take control of your own life. Even if you don't love yourself, think about your child. And if you survive it, what is that going to do to your child mentally? What? I mean, I just don't know. And, and you know, I... I and if you survive one of these oppressive jobs, what is that going to do to you mentally? Oh, I lost off of, I had, a, I had a, 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 one of my administrators many years ago when my first child was very young. And uh, he wasn't feeling well. And when I'm there, I give 150%. I'm there every day of the year and he was sick and I had to you know I wanted to go and he looked at me and said something crazy I said oh no single mother had mortgage to pay I said you talking to oh no I got my purse <laughs> don't forget the purse Randy I got my purse and Vanita was out I left that food sitting right there guess, and guess what and did not have a job and did not care but because I was also took a stance, he called me on the telephone and wanted to talk about it. No, when you question me about my child and my child would feel well, we don't have anything to talk about. Or you should be questioning me. That you know, things like that. You know what I mean? Just or abuse from from employers. I mean, it's just... And see, and that that was years ago though, when you could could walk off a job in a huff, which I've done many times, walk off a job in a huff on a Monday and have a new job at the temp agency on Tuesday and have a paycheck on Friday. But that is not happening in today's world. And it is, it, 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 and it is this new reality that has people so afraid uh, uh, to which is why when the dentist, you know, and these are you know um, economically well off people that I'm talking about, but even still, for the for the dentist to say, you know, I'm out is a big deal because people are not doing that these days. They are afraid, you know, the employer to look you right in your face and tell you. Uh, I don't care what you do, you know, I got a thousand people standing outside the job door ready to take your job. And it's true. You know, it's true. Again, how much abuse are we going to tolerate?
Tell them live righteous and tell them be happy. Tell them that you love them and we need them badly. Teach them culture and I teach them family. Please don't make the children be another victim. Give them the knowledge and let life give wisdom. See, life shouldn't be so harsh. We gave up on our progeny, that's how it starts. Trying to wash your hands to them, they can't get washed. Gave up on your progeny and now they lost. Please, before you fly a plane in the building, yo, why don't you think about the children before you let Bush drop another bomb to kill them? Please, oh please, meditate on the children We teach war to our sons and our daughter And that's why they inherit the wars of the father So I cry for the children Cry for the children Cry for the children I cry for the children no. I cry for the children I cry for the children I cry for the children Cry for the children I cry, I, I for the children no. I cry for the children They lost with no one to leave them Thank you.